You are listening to Radiant Creators, a collaborative project composed of people whose passion, purpose, and dedication requires forging their own unique path of empowerment and livelihood. A Radiant Creator isn't making a living, they are living. Welcome to Radiant Creators. Today, we have Aline Day McCusick on the show. Aline Day McCusick is a pioneering researcher, writer, inventor, practitioner, educator, and speaker in the fields of therapeutic sound, the human biofield, and electric health. She has a master's in integrative education and has been studying the effects of sound on the human body and its electromagnetic system since 1996. She is the originator of the sound therapy method biofield tuning with over 2,000 students trained worldwide since 2010. The founder of the Biofield Tuning Institute and author of the award-winning best-selling book, Tuning the Human Biofield, Healing with Vibrational Sound Therapy, as well as the upcoming book, Electric Body, Electric Health, Using the Electromagnetism Within and Around You to Rewire, Recharge, and Raise Your Voltage, due out in January 2021. And the first time, after doing hundreds of interviews, for real, I forgot to hit the record button right away. Um, so we missed the first couple minutes of this interview, but I have the feeling that it was a meaningful synchronicity, and it just actually started when the interview was its most powerful. So first couple minutes are missing, that's why we appear to start abruptly, and that's why I'm doing the introduction for Aline. Still, this was an amazing interview, and I'm just going to think this... Uh, blooper of, of, of missing the first couple of minutes is just uh well it made it all the more powerful and now we will abruptly get started rather than no the, our cosmological story is one of darkness entropy disconnection right so big bang theory is also highly illogical so in the beginning was nothing which for no reason one day suddenly exploded and then it achieved a high degree of order for reasons we don't really understand, but now it's just kind of flying apart and entropy is going on and it's all random, it's all disconnected, it's all cold. There are black holes that devour light and mysterious dark energy and dark matter and, and it's all going down, <laughs> right? It's really dark. And this is the overarching story of like life itself. It's dark, separate, chaotic, entropic, random, pointless. We're all alone. Nobody can hear us, you know, with our suffering in this meaningless corner of the galaxy that we're in. Yeah. And so all of a sudden I started reading in this totally different cosmological story that it was all light, that it was all electric, that it was all connected, that my body was full of plasma. And, and I was like, oh my God, this is the light that I have been seeking and I didn't even know. The last self-help book I ever read is not a self-help book. It's called The Electric Sky by Donald Scott. And it is a very authoritative treatise on why the universe is electric and the world around us. And suddenly I was like, this is the reconciliation between the spiritual notion of all is one. And then my logical, rational, secular, educated mind that's been told it's all separate. Like now there is science and logic and rationale that explains this light body. Like I had an experience when I was 18 of like seeing the light and, and had of becoming aware of my own biological electrical body, but nobody ever told me that I had an electric body. So I was like, am I Jesus Christ? Like I'm illuminated, what's going on, right? I only had a religious or spiritual context to frame that actual biological experience. Then you get right down to it, our electric body is our soul. And, and science has been telling us all we have no soul. Your soul goes away when you die. That's your light body. That is, can never die. Oh, it makes sense. Well, uh, so the cosmological storyteller definitely does fit, and you still consider yourself to be that. And I like it. I mean, uh, yeah, it'd be kind of hard to put that on a business card, but well, <laughs> but times are changing, so I think it'll be fine. Well, um, Here's a question for you. So when you feel a person's uh, vibes, you know, 
it's a real thing, isn't it? I mean, you can actually, the way we're looking at things, you can break that down and say, okay, I can see that scientifically. So the feeling of a person having good or bad, bad vibes, some people, they feel good. Some people, they go, oh, bad vibes. And I think that somehow it reminds me of like, what, you're, what you're saying is we don't have to judge ourselves for not liking the way somebody feels or some situation feels. That's just our natural energy that's the natural extension of us we we feel our environment so when something feels good we go ah that that way feels good that path feels good this one doesn't this person feels good that one doesn't and so by not knowing about really the electric university electric body electrical health um we sort of we sort of don't know how to uh understand our our natural guidance system which is built in and and profoundly perfect i mean it helped our ancestors know you know that there was a saber-toothed lion hiding behind that rock over there you know but now we would just fall over that rock and get eaten you know what i mean yeah because we've become so numbed and desensitized and told to not trust our own feelings we've been very much programmed to turn off our own senses turn off our own knowing turn off our own feelings and submit to authority you know and and a big part of what i've discovered as a teacher is just how disconnected people are from their own senses and how distrustful they are of their own senses and their own knowing and their own wisdom and that's a big part of the role I play as a teacher is being like, don't ask me that question. Like, at, like ask the universe, trust your own knowing. There, the, all the information about everything is everywhere and completely accessible to us. We're infinite beings. I was doing a session on somebody last week and she was having these issues with her kidneys and the way that I sound, I use it like sonar and my mind becomes like an ultrasound screen and I can see things and I can see her kidney and I can see that it's kind of like an old, um, an old mango that's gotten all kind of shriveled up and you know, I can see, I see what's going on. And so I say to the universe, uh, I feel like there's a particular herb um, that is probably helpful for what she has going on with her kidneys. And so I asked for it. I was like, what is it? And then a few minutes later, I was working and all of a sudden it dropped in marshmallow. I'm like, I'm not an herbalist. I don't know about herbs. I don't study that stuff. But I know that the answers are in the ether. I know that I can trust my own connection to the source of all that is. And that if and if there's and if you get enough of the noise out of your own signal, right? Because that's key. I've been tuned and tuned and tuned and tuned some more. <laughs> You know, and the thing is, is that tuning is a continual thing. Like people are like, you don't come, you don't go to a chiropractor once, you know, like whenever I pick up my guitar to play it, I have to tune it. I have to tune it every single time I play it. Like your own body is the same way. Every single day takes you out of tune in some way or another. And part of health is having a practice of putting yourself back in tune every day because your instrument is going to start sounding worse and worse and worse and worse if you don't tune it it's 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 daily it's a lifestyle it's not a, like i'm going to go to a tuner three times and i'm going to be put back in shape and i'm going to stay that way for the rest of my life it doesn't work that way like ideally we want our lifestyle to be supportive of putting us back together and putting us into even our daily practices some of the work that i'm teaching now you don't even need a tuning fork for you just use your own voice and you play with your own voice inside your body, inside your own instrument in such a way that you are tuning it because you're checking in and you're, you know, being present with it and you're occupying all the different notes that you can express, right? And so even just sitting around humming, humming or whistling while you did, like there's so many ways that we can, little ways that we can always be tuning ourselves. And then that, that's the art of health is that responding to those subtle cues of like Ooh, bad vibe over there Ooh, good vibe over there and the more in tune we are the more we sense that if we've numbed and dulled ourselves out we're going to tolerate pain inputs that maybe we don't have to and if we were allowing ourselves to really get the message from those and and felt worthy we would be able to move away there's a fellow by the name of um Oh darn, I'm not thinking of his name in this moment. Hopefully it'll come back to me. Uh, he, he, was an anesthe he is an anesthesiologist who became really interested in consciousness. And he wrote a paper on the idea that, that we were designed, like human beings were designed to pursue pleasure, to move away from pain. Like the point of life is to experience as much pleasure as possible. 
And sometimes when people hear that, they, they get offended. It's a really interesting thing. There's a certain type that's like, oh, you know, like I have a friend who's a spiritual teacher and she said when I told her that, that this guy was pitching this story, this idea, uh, she was like, well, what about, what about the, the bliss of union with the divine? And I was like, well, that sounds pretty pleasurable to me, right? I mean, why do we want anything? Why do we want the new car? Why do we want the fit body? Why do we want the no debt? Why do we want anything that we want? Because we believe and we feel that it's going to give us pleasure. Yeah. And so we've got to know where the pain is, you know, in order to know that it's, we've got to move away in order to fulfill the destiny of life, which wants to enjoy life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like there's a, a channeled entity, Bashar, and he's been around for quite a while. And he talks about really, you follow your excitement. Just where do you feel excitement? And many of us, many individuals, they don't, they have to really sit with that and go, I don't know. They go, I've, I haven't. I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'm like 50 years old and I've, I've never felt excited. You know what I mean? I, I never right. have been, so I don't know. So it's in part of that tuning, it might say, uh, just as like an, an analogy, you know, tuning the chakras, just like you're tuning uh, guitar strings. If you're not in tune, if you don't have that standard tuning, really, I feel like your standard tuning is all you can truly feel clearly with. So you have to kind of get to that place first before you can follow your excitement. And really your excitement is just your, it's it's yourself i mean you're the you, know, you could say you're the universe and it's just saying hey over here there's something exciting but if you're not in tune you can't feel it yeah well here i can i can give people an exercise that'll make that easier okay and we call it following your ahs as opposed to following your uhs <laughs> and there it's a really simple thing if you think about doing something and if it feels like oh it feels uplifting it feels energizing you're drawn to it like that's going to make you feel that way if you think about doing something and it makes you feel deflated and tired and crabby you know maybe you're doing it out of duty or guilt or obligation but you don't really want to that's going to be your experience and the more you do that stuff the more your life is going to be like that you know, and and obviously it's not either or, right? But even the start to tune in. You know, somebody says calls you up and says, "Hey, can you help me with this?" And your body goes, Ugh. you know. Then you you know, then you say, "I'm sorry, I really can't right now." Instead of like, "Okay, sure, I'll help you." You know, <laughs> when you really that that faking it. A lot of people fake it. A lot of people are going through their whole lives just faking it. They're not speaking their truth. They're not following their own inner guidance you know they're living their life to make other people happy and they, they don't have the courage to be selfish because that's part of what it is you know is is a kind of like oh, i want to go this way <laughs> and and people can really guilt you out if you've had a history of always acting from ug and you have all these people around you that depend on you in that role the moment you start you know getting out of the bottom of the puppy pile to take care of yourself which you have every right to do they're going to turn around and give you a hard time but you know what they get over it and the more you follow your awe the better it is for everybody around you to live in the truth and speak the truth of who you are you create a life that's true i mean i've been there where i like bottled it all up and was a people pleaser and an accommodator and i was a mess it was a mess and it's only in becoming selfish and creating boundaries and taking care of ourselves that we can actually show up for other people in a healthy and appropriate way oh definitely and that's well an aspect of your electrical health and uh, mm -hmm. um, something that you mentioned I find this to be well I found it to be challenging but but fun a good challenge and you start doing it and you want to do it more and more uh, is you mentioned in one of your lectures to, well, actually more than one, only be truthful. Start this practice of only being truthful. And I think about that because when you think about muscle testing, you know, is this good for you or is this not? And, oh, no, that, that, that makes me weak. Oh, that makes me strong. So truth makes your electric body strong, obviously, and, and then falsehood mm -hmm. makes it weak. So every time we speak untruth, then ultimately we're weakening our, weakening our electric body. And I think one of the things that's happening in the world today and I guess, I guess it always has been, but there's so much untruth. I think when you hear untruth, it weakens your electric body. So I think along with speaking only truth, which is definitely a life change for many people, we can always be kind, you know, but it's definitely a big change. But also if you're going to start 
to not listen to untruth any longer, you got to unplug from the media. You got to unplug from a lot of things because that's all untruth. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there, there's so much untruth going on at the moment. And what's, what's, what's sad in a way is that people aren't realizing that they don't really know anything. You know, that the, the news gives you snippets of this and snippets of that and this perspective and that. And and it's all spun and it, it's all like, I don't know, manipulative. And people hear these bits and then they just parrot them and they think that they're true. And people end up fighting about these little bits of information that they think that they know. And meanwhile, none of us have a clue about anything. We've been lied to about everything. I don't believe anything I was taught in school. I don't believe anything about anything I've been taught by anybody because very little has the resonance of truth. And I've had to dig very deeply in my journey as a seeker to find what rings true. And I'll tell you what, the stuff that rings true is the stuff that's getting censored. And if you're not parroting the stuff that's getting censored, you're probably just parroting a lot of lies and getting very stressed about other people's lies and everybody's fighting over all these lies and meanwhile like we have this beautiful opportunity to connect with source to connect with each other i mean there's so many other things we could be doing than believing lies and fighting about them oh absolutely and that's the thing about being selfish that's so good and it's where it's hard for people because really selfish is just following your excitement it's it's caring that you tune your own strings your own chakras your own biosphere and why not it's a, it's a huge paradigm shift for a lot of people i mean you think about traditional universe theory of gravity and such versus electronic well electric universe theory just changes everything so when you get into that good electric health you say yeah i'm selfish i do what i want and i think what i want and i'm honest about it yeah. <laughs> and people people go how dare you how dare you <laughs> How dare you? You just get out of here and I'll, <laughs> all right, I'm out of here, you know, because there's too much yeah. untruth here, you know. So I'd always be, I myself, always be kind, but really you find yourself in these, uh, you know, crazy situations where uh, we think about the world being crazy right now, and I think it is a bit crazier than it has been in, in recent years, is uh, it's a reminder to me that you're here for you you're here about you and of course you have your loved ones and those you care about and you, you take care of them also but really you really came here to figure out who you are to connect that inner authority to that source and create from there and follow that excitement and you know if we do that that's really our purpose so even if the world's going crazy why does that stop the individual from living their purpose yeah, and they're gifts too, because part of us being free is being free to develop our gifts, right? And everybody has gifts, everybody's gifted. Everybody that I've ever worked on, I can find the gift in and it's always beautiful and amazing. And I reflect it back to them, I'm like, wow, listen to how amazing you are in this way. And then I get kind of shy and be like, I need that, right? Everybody knows that they yeah. have something beautiful in them. So when we're selfish and we seek to develop the gifts that have been given to us, then we're able to share those gifts. And that is always enriching to people when they, when they, someone who has a beautiful gift shares it, a beautiful singer or, you know, or my weird ability to hear what's going on in your soul, you know, mm -hmm. and reflect that back to you and help you to become more whole because of that reflection, what a strange gift. And believe me, when I started going off, you know, into teen forks, I was told, I was given all kinds of a hard time. You know, they were like, what kind of nonsense is that? And I'm like, I don't know, but I'm feeling compelled to go this way. And, and if I hadn't, if I hadn't I had to put it like a stake in the sand and be like, I am <laughs> like, do you know, I, I don't care what you say. I don't care about your judgment. I'm, and I know this is weird, but this is my truth. This is my odd. Ah, this is interesting and exciting, and I'm going to go off and follow it. And and that was a selfish thing to do, you know, as far as other people were concerned. But the fruits of that have helped so many people. Like, how can mm. we say that that was selfish? It isn't yeah. really, you know, it isn't, it isn't, it's ultimately very selfless when it comes right down to it, because you're, you developing your gifts as an artist or whatever it is, you just being in the truth of who you are, 
you know? And even just like you said, like that practice, I started this in 2017 to to not tell a lie in any mm -hmm. way, shape or form, not a little white lie in a text, like nothing ever that is any kind of untruth ever. And it puts you in integrity because every time you do something that's not quite plum and square, you're energizing all those parts of you that aren't plum and square. Your system is no longer in integrity. Beauty, truth, order, harmony, love, it's all the same thing. It's all that vibrational sweet spot of the truth of what we are as humans as part of nature. Mm -hmm. And we, the only thing standing in your way is that you don't believe it. Yeah. Yeah, it's that selfishness really is just walking your path and saying, yeah, this is my job. I'm going to do that. And along that path, of course, comes our gifts, what we're here for. That's the thing about, you know, self-employment that I have found, you know, people being entrepreneurial. Uh, I know entrepreneurial has a lot of, you know, things hung to it. It can mean a lot to a lot of people. But most people who decide I'm going to live in, in that integrity, only be truthful, I'm going to take care of my, well, physical health, electric health you know, body, mind, and spirit, and they walk that path, they almost are always self-employed in some way because their purpose, I mean, hey, nothing wrong with making money from it if you can, and it seems like their purpose is so unique, they don't have time for a nine to five, per se. Right, or, or the mindset. I mean, I could never, you know, for me as an artist who's, who's always self-identified as an artist and a creative, like that's just too boring, like the pain of that, of, of like the regular routine and the predictability is much more great than the pain of the unknown for me, mm -hmm. you know, and I'll take the pain of the unknown. I mean, there were years when our kids were little and my husband and I were both committed to being artists. And so we're both self-employed, committed to being artists and, you know, work would come and go. We'd never know from one week to the next, like how much money we were making, if we were going to cover mm -hmm. our bills. And that was very painful. But it was less painful than sacrificing our art and going and working for somebody else in some kind of nine to five. Like, right? It all just depends on what pain you want. Do you want the, the pain of the unknown and the pain of paying your dues? And, the, you know, because for a lot of years we paid our dues and, you know, but then we emerged really in the top of our fields in what we do, you know, because, mm -hmm. because we did pay our dues, because we did choose that more difficult unknown path you know, mm -hmm. to, to be true to who we were. And Definitely. there were some scary moments, you know, <laughs> but in the end, I think you feel a lot better, you know, when you lay down your head at night, knowing that you're living your adventure and your truth, oh. then you're stuck in some rut somewhere to, without the courage to get out. Yeah. You're, you're, ex you're exhausted from living your passion all day rather than exhausted from, well, humiliation and despair and shame. You know, because yeah. uh, I mean, if you got to pick, you must well, you know, pick the better one. And yeah, I mean, there are times when you're on your own path and things kind of go wrong and you start thinking, man, I kind of miss that, like, oh, that, that, um, that corporate job and that bad relationship. Oh, <laughs> but then you go, nah, I don't miss it that much. It's kind of like if somebody says, uh, people used to say, people used to say, I'll never give up my Blackberry because I love the little keyboard. Oh, Blackberry's gone. You didn't love it that much, you know, so. Actually, I beg to differ. Um, oh, okay. And Android and Blackberry got married and had a baby with a keyboard and my husband has it because he's one of those Blackberry users. Really? Yeah. Oh, oh they still make them. Okay, well, yeah. there you go. I, 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 I admire he his He refused fortitude. to give up his keyboard and I guess he manifested one, so. Oh, goodness. Well, he had that original Blackberry for so many years. He just kept buying them on Amazon mm -hmm. until they weren't supported anymore. Oh my that's gosh. Funny thing, those Blackberry users. <laughs> wow. That's funny. Well, I guess you could say like either that's genius or nothing dies harder than a bad idea. I guess, <laughs> I guess we'll see how it plays out. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, so I was going to ask, you know, just you just many things to ask, but I'll, I'll try to keep to my little list here. One is right now we're living in a very, very digital world. And there's an importance to the importance to the analog experience, you know, to listening to a record, to uh, playing a guitar, which is an analog experience, um, vacuum tubes, not everything being solid state. But basically, it seems that we're living in a time right now where we are so digital, digitally connected, like got the iPhone, of course, you know, we're, we're using technology right now. So, of course, it does serve a purpose, but I do, it does seem that there's a digital addiction and it's kind of making an ADHD society 
that is in a unhealthy state. And so um, how do you think we're doing analog versus digital? I mean, it does seem like we really need to have some barefoot practices, some analog practices and say, okay, I'm going to use my technology for work for these things, but then I'm going to put it down like as little digital experience as I can have, you know, and then get back to real life because real life is analog. It's not digital. Yeah. I mean, that's a really big conversation, isn't it? Um, using tuning forks for all these years, you know, which are terribly primitive and analog, definitely enamored me of the analog experience because it's living. You know, there's a dynamic interaction between the, the fork calling out its sound and the body calling out its sound and the conversation between the two that happens. That if I were to have some kind of digital tone generator, it wouldn't, that conversation wouldn't be there, that living quality. There is a new device that is out now. It's, a, it's an electronic, electric health healing device, vibrational device. And um, many people have reached out to me because it's a kind of like, you know, you become a distributor and you get other people to become distributors kind of kind of arrangement. And I'm not I'm not interested in it. You know, it, it's like I, at one point I really wanted to create a technology that would do what biofield tuning does. But in the years and the experiments that I've done, I've concluded that the human interaction, the bedside manner, the soul to soul witnessing of somebody's pain cannot be taken. The place cannot be taken by a digital doctor. <laughs> you know, that's, it's just, that's, there's something in the deep listening of a caregiver that is so vital in, in the being seen and being heard. So, do I think those the, the device is wonderful? Yeah, I'm sure that it is. You know, I'm sure that it's helping people with pain and all of that. Um, but I'm just not interested in things that plug in. And I, besides that, like, we're all so bathed in so much man-made electromagnetic energy that I think the last thing we need is more, uh, you know, of that. I think we need less of that. And like you said, more like barefoot outside drumming circles like that's the medicine that people need you know that's the medicine that people need and it's been proven by numerous studies that drumming in circles has a way it has gives an uplift like music and sound and being together and all and being barefoot and being in nature and expressing our essential humanness is something that's really been taken away from us many many people don't even have access to and enjoyment of their own singing voice you know that what are we but instruments and if we and if we've been all shut down we don't believe that we're musical and we can't sing and we can't play an instrument then we've massively diminished our human potential and that the you know the, what i'm finding is that the freedom that we seek is all actually can be found on the voice it can all be found on the voice because the degree of freedom, the degree of health is all expressed through the voice itself. That's a, the work of Sherry Edwards, where she's able to hear, you know, that's her kind of strange gift is that she can hear these subtleties in people's voices and determine, you know, oh, their kidneys aren't right. I can hear it in their vocal tone. And she developed a technology to be able to read and then treat people in that way. Um, but, you know, I think when it's all said and done, our essential humanness um, will walk away from the digitized world. Like, I see it as a phase that, we, that serves a purpose and that we'll all learn. Um, but ultimately, like, when I envision my perfect future, there's no cell phones in it. There's a lot of instruments, a lot of musical instruments, but there's not a lot, a lot of digital stuff going on. And, and I think that, you know, part of what's going on in the world right now is everybody's going to become so heavily digitized with kids in school that, that people are just going to be like, forget about it. You know, like I've had my fill of that. Like I need fresh air. I need, and it's just, it's the fun bottom line is, is that it's not good for our electric health to be immersed in that continuous. It's just not. We lose order. Yeah. Um, well, you mentioned voice and voice being a key. I know for myself, I've done some you know, voice lessons and actually somebody 
that we've had on the show a few times, Kate Hart, and she's a great uh, vocal coach, you know, worked with quite, quite a good number of people. And how people's gifts are unique is uh, something I see in her is just like a palm reader can read your palm, except, you know, uh, and you can read a person's biofield, you can feel it with the fork. Um, she can listen to your voice and she can watch your face and she can pretty much do a reading. She can, she can see what's going on with you. She can see why. She'll say, you have a tight upper lip. You know, like, where did you get that? And you go, oh, well, you know, <laughs> yeah, I do. So yeah, well, you had an interesting, an interesting journey along the way. So you're, you're healing with sound, but you uh, have had a hard time you, learning to sing, but you mentioned that really it was a matter of finding the right teacher to, to well, learn to express yourself in that way. Yeah, I think that I've always had uh, trouble with sound. Even when I was little, uh, I had a lisp and I was in speech therapy for years, you mm -hmm. know, watching my speech therapist's mouth. And I think that I have some, I do have a, a some kind of hearing deficiency and that when people are wearing masks, I really struggle, especially here in Jamaica, you know, I have a hard enough time understanding the Jamaicans and if they're talking to me behind mm -hmm. a mask, like forget about it, like I'm not hearing it at all. And so uh, when, I, when I first started taking singing lessons, when I was 20, because I received very clear direction from source that said, you need to learn to sing. And I was really not, obviously, I was not a musical person. I did not come from a musical family. I, I clapped on the offbeat. I sang off key. I squeaked my clarinet like I was a hopeless music student. Um, but this direction came in very clear. And, <clears throat> and you know, that's one thing, maybe a gift too, that I've had ever since I was a teenager. I graduated from high school a couple of years early and started working and traveling. And I traveled around the world uh, by myself starting at age 17. Not over the whole world, but a whole bunch. And, and so I would always follow my inner guidance. And so, you know, when you travel by yourself like that, you don't have anything else to rely on other than your own inner guidance. And so my inner guidance, when it said something, I learned to listen. And so I started to a journey to sing and between the ages of 20 and 27, I had seven different voice teachers. And the first five told me I was tone deaf. They said, you're tone deaf. You just, you don't hear properly. Like we sing la and you sing la and you're just like way off key. And, and they believed that it was a life sentence and I didn't mm -hmm. believe that. And so I just kept going from teacher to teacher to teacher, trying to find somebody to help me break through. It wasn't the teachers that I had the breakthrough with. It was my own body and my own body as an instrument. Because what I discovered was that I had, I had massive amounts of tension in my body and that I was, I was outside of myself. I was not living in the present now. I had been diseased and infected by our culture that had taken me outside of myself. And I was, and I was living in judgment, like looking at myself in judgment and loathing and tension and misery because that's what going through school in our culture created. I and mean, it turned me into a depressed, suicidal, mentally and emotionally ill teenager. And I think that's what our culture produces. And it's so not their fault. It's just what, and then you feel powerless. You're like, there's nothing I can do. And you know, there's all kinds of stories that go with that. And like you said, like you've, you've spent all this time in school being told what to do that when suddenly you're set free, you don't know what you like. You don't know what you're excited about. You don't have any idea who you are because you've just been turned into a cog. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not a recipe yeah. for fulfilling your dreams at all. Um, and so, so anyway, I, but I persisted and then I, I started doing yoga and I started receiving body work and I started to heal. I started to relax. I started to enter back into my body and, and be actually able to feel my human instrument from the inside out. Mm. You know, it's been a whole journey of not ascending, but like descending, entering into a, a level of comfort and joy with, with the body itself, because it's the body that makes the sound, right? Yeah, and, feeling yeah. The human, yeah, feeling the human instrument. I like the way you, you put that because that really is something that people, I, I think uh, that the tuning fork therapy, the tuning fork work really, really can help people do. There's many ways that, that aid it, that help it, but I think it's a very powerful and direct way to help people get, get that biosphere uh, clear and get the chakras tuned up. And then they start to go, oh, here's my human instrument because it really is, 
I think we already mentioned it, but still, it's just so true how many people, if you, if they were very honest, they could, they, they would tell you, I have no idea what excitement is, yeah. you know, and I have no idea what feeling good is. And so it's a way that it almost doesn't require their mind. You can just say, Let, let's just start clearing your bias or let's start working on this. And all of a sudden they go, they, sometimes we need that glimpse of what it's like to feel good, of what it's like to have excitement. Because if a person's never done it, you're asking them to figure something out they haven't done. But if they can get you know clear enough that they can feel it, then all of a sudden they want it. That's right. You know? Yeah, and, and that's the thing. And that's what biofield tuning does, is it just helps get the noise out of your signal. And once your signal to noise ratio is clear, it's like getting the snow out of the TV screen. You know, and you're also like, that's who I am. That's what I want, you know? That's what I like. That's what excites me. Wow, and, and you know, it's been there all along. But but I'll tell you what, like school and life and our culture and everything, like it takes it out of everybody. It, it like dims everybody's light. It crushes everybody's spirit. You know, it makes you hopeless and despairing. And never mind that cosmological story of darkness, you know, and everybody's walking around in this like dark, depressed, separate, dead inside, not everybody, but many people, you know, it, 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 because that's what our culture does. It sucks the light and life out of people and then sells it back to you. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, is that light and life is still there. You know, it just needs to be put in better order is all. You're like a thumb puzzle that's like the out of whack. Like we can put your pieces and parts back into harmony and order and function. And then you, you get your life back. You get yourself back. And you get your own belief in your own ability to be free back. Because everybody has that ability. You know, 10 years ago, I was broken and dead and overweight and miserable and all of that. And now I'm none of those things. You know, I'm in a villa by the ocean in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I don't have debt anymore. I, 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 I've honed my field to the point where I am a very good manifester. You know, I could just speak that I want something and, and it appears because my field is, that's the way life works. When we're in harmony, when we're in order, the word is creative. And when we speak only truth and we stay in that order and then we speak our desires to the universe, the universe responds. So we can get to that place of order. You know, if you're sick and miserable and broken and dead, yeah, I hear you. I, I was there too when I, when I was living in the world of solid, mm -hmm. liquid, and gas. When I added plasma and I started thinking electrically, suddenly I had this whole new state of matter and ether too, and you can learn about that in my book. But all, and, and syntropy, which is the opposite of entropy, and levity, you know, which is like all of a sudden there's like all these different states of matter and different forces of nature and when you start to understand and they've been there all along but you didn't have the construct to make use of them but once you start to grasp that these forces are there and make use of them then you can solve all these problems that you couldn't solve i did i've seen callous people at this point solve these problems that they couldn't solve and they started thinking electrically and then they could and if mm. we can do this so dramatically on an individual level you know, it makes me look at all the problems we have out in the world. They're all solvable. And and everybody has it within them to be part of the solution. Mm-hmm. Oh, they absolutely do. Well, because there is something about getting that little that little crack in the eggshell that lets some light in and you go, whoa, look, there really is light. Because um, an experience I had, and this was like a good number of years ago, I'm reminded of is where... I was unhappy as laying there, living in Seattle, kind of a depressing place. And <laughs> I was there and I woke up. It was kind of early morning, but I, I woke up and I could tell I wasn't supposed to wake up and realize this was happening, but there was this light that was just kind of emanating from the room that was entering the, uh, the heart chakra, the heart. And I could feel it doing things. And it was like, it was as if I was on Novocaine and you're getting a tooth drilled, it was doing things, it was moving things around. And I could actually hear that there was more than one being doing that and they were chatting. And they're like, oh, look, he woke up, doesn't matter, it's all right. And then, you know, when that was over, I hopped out of bed and I changed my life. But just really, like that. just like that, I, the thing was, what they were doing, and I could hear them communicating and I understood what was happening, they were like, this guy's heart chakra is too, this guy's heart energy is too blocked. He's at a point where nothing else is going to happen. You know, he's just stuck. Um, he wants to do more, but he's stuck. And, I, and it kind of seemed like that was my path, just to push and push and push until you get stuck and can't go any further. Then they were like, okay, this is scheduled. This is time. Let's just 
clear this out of there. I woke up and I could do things and I was somebody that I wasn't before that happened. Wow, that's so cool. I love it when I hear stories like that. Hey, um, Craig, I have to ask you, and I'm kind of breaking the interview here, was this supposed to be two hours or one? It can be two hours or one, or oh, it can be okay. any, any, any mix. So, I mean, okay. what right. works for you? Well, where I'm at is um, I have another meeting at 2.30, but I, I have um, I have to get on the phone. So I can do like maybe five, 10, 10 minutes more tops. Yeah, yeah. Let me just, um, let me find something cool. Here you go. We will ask you a few more, a few little questions here. Um, seeing people's energy. You mentioned in a, uh, a YouTube, cultivating photonic density for health and vitality. You mentioned that you've kind of developed x-ray vision and seeing patterns in people's bodies. Now, is this something that you can do while you're using the tuning fork only, or is this something you're, you're beginning to be able to do without it? Do you just see these things? No, I've been able to do this for a really long time. I can just close my eyes and look at somebody and I can see their energy patterns. Yeah, because that, and that's not such a big deal. You know, people are like, oh, it's supernatural or what? It's not, you know, we we're all have way more sensory capabilities than we've been taught. We all have magnetic vision. We all have the ability to see magnetic fields and this has been scientifically proven. And we all have like little antennas on all of our cell membranes that actually read and transmit vibrational information. So we actually have like a biological apparatus for sensing vibes. So it, you know, when you're like, that's, it's not some intuition thing that some people may have, like we're all, all of nature is designed to read vibes because that, and, and there is a universal vibrational language. Animals and plants speak the same vibrational language as humans. Fear is the same in them that it is in us. Like there is a language of nature that is unified. And that's the language that we learned here in the forks. Like the, it, it, it gets, it comes through. It's like a, it's like dropping a needle on an album, you know, when we read the biofield and you can read the record of somebody's life. So wait, come back. What was that? What was the original question that you asked there? Because I. Oh, it was basically uh, seeing. You know, oh, you're, seeing. You're, you're able to yeah. see, you know, the stuff in the in the biosphere in the body. Yeah. And With can... the tuning forks, I can hear more. The tuning forks, like if I bounce sound off somebody, like I will get the mental image that's like an ultrasound screen, and I'll be like, oh, your third cervical vertebrae is rotated like 30 degrees. You know, <laughs> like I can see that sort of thing. I can see misalignments in joints. I can see the the skeletal system better than i can see anything else but it also has the most concentration of electrical energy you know there's literally light in our bones so when i close my eyes i'm perceiving that vibrational information and other people can do it it doesn't seem to come as naturally to most people but i do have had some other students who can who can see that a lot of it's trust you know it's subtle it's subtle you got to close your eyes you got to know what you're looking for and you got to trust your perceptions and, and the, you know, there, there are a lot of places for people to get stymied in that not trusting themselves. Oh, I like it. And uh, yeah, because the first time I, I've, I'm, I'm new to the, using the fork and the first time I went around somebody's, you know, went around somebody, the first time I ran into something, it was like uh, I had stuck the fork into jello. And I went, oh, yeah, this is real. There's that moment because you, you, you're not sure what to expect. And so you're just kind of cruising around and all of a sudden poof, you're like, Whoa, yeah. this is, whoa, what's plasma. that? What's it's plasma? That? <laughs> yeah, there's this, like yeah. this, and you could see it, and I'm like, whoa, what is this? So I'm new to it, but definitely um, you are seeing and feeling something. You just stuck your fork in it, and you're like, wow, it's, oh, look, it's jello, lime with pineapple, you know, yeah. <laughs> something like that. Um, well, also, if time permits, uh, tuning the human biofield and speeding up manifestation. So definitely in one of your, you do go through in some of your videos about how to have good electronic health, how to take care of yourself in that way. But you have mentioned that as you get more healthy with your biosphere, uh, your energy body, then you're able to speed up manifestation. Now, this just basically seems to make sense to me, of course, but I think that that's definitely a motivating factor for people because many people know the power of intention. They know law of attraction, but they go, you know, it's not really working for me. And I think the truth is they're out of tune. You get in tune, then it works better. 
so you you you've seen or experienced basically a speeding up of manifestation for yourself and others through tuning the uh, energy body yeah because you're sending out a clearer signal about what you want <laughs> and and that it's just the way life works and so if the signal is clear and it's strong you know your voltage is high your signal is clear you know exactly what you want you speak it out it comes back i'll just give you an example a friend of mine told me that uh, he, he was drinking jelly coconuts every day. Okay, now jelly coconut is the young coconuts that coconut water comes from. And here in Jamaica, you can buy them everywhere and they get whacked the top off with a machete and give you a straw and you drink it right out of the straw. And it's full of electrolytes. So it's very good for our electric health. It's living sunlight right inside a coconut. And so I said, I wanna drink a jelly coconut every day. All right. Three days later, one of my acquaintances shows up at the end of my driveway at my gate and she's got um, some produce, including three jelly coconuts. OK. And I was like, "Yay, these coconuts showed up. But, you know, and I drank them. But then I was like, but I wanted to drink them every day. OK. So like a week later, this woman shows up with um, a gunny sack, you know, full of coconuts, full of coconuts. I mean, the, the bag weighed over 100 pounds. This woman, this burly Jamaican woman, brought it down from the bush and delivered it to the end of my driveway. And now we have a, and she just came this morning because we were out and I said yesterday, I was like, Yeti, I just said it to, to the universe. I was like, Yeti, we need some coconuts. And I show up this morning um, down at the other place that we stay at and there's Yeti with my bag of coconuts. And I call her, I don't even have her phone number, right? Yes. So, so that's just an example of, you know, manifestation, just like that. The, and and it, you get better and better and better at it with all kinds of things. Um, many dreams that I created in my mind 10 years ago are coming true for me now. You know, and it can take time. I had to do a lot of healing. I had to do a lot of clearing. I do a lot of crying. I mean, there's a lot, you know, and there's a lot of pain to get through to get to that place where you can just speak truth all the time. You know, it, it, mm -hmm. it, there was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears <laughs> that went into becoming more of a clear channel, but it's absolutely doable. You know, if I can do it, if I was suffering with all that stuff and I did it, you know, I believe anybody can do it because we all have that potential. We all have that vibrational sweet spot. And, you know, biofield tuning is a tried and true way. You know, it's not the end all be all. And I've made use of other modalities as well, but it's been the primary thing of really integrating all these old stuck emotions and everything that you've never expressed isn't just some wound to heal. It's potential to access because that's a part of you that is electric energy that has been offline. It's been frozen in that baggage, trauma, whatever story. And once you liberate it from that, once you resolve the dissonance and bring that energy back into circulation, which is kind of the essence of biofield tuning, you suddenly now have a part of yourself that you didn't have before. So it makes it more like if you think of it in terms of liberating potential instead of like healing wounds, it's way more fun. You know, and it's like every bit of potential that I liberate raises my voltage and makes me healthier. Yeah. Well, we hear so much about raising your energy and I'll just call it like the new age thought, you know, we have to raise our energy, et cetera. And as you've mentioned, I believe, I forget if it's in your, just your book or if it was a video, I forget which, but I've heard you mention it that no, really it's about tuning what you've got. Yeah. It's, it's the raise your vibration thing. It's not the raise your energy. It's the raise, raise your vibration. vibration. Like everybody we need to high vibes, you know, everybody wants to vibe higher. Um, yeah, I don't, I, I, I get what people are saying and, and I appreciate the intention, you know, which is, um, but I, I think that the language is kind of technically incorrect. We don't want to vibe higher. We want to vibe clearer. You know, we want to, we want to, we don't want to ascend out, you know, we want to descend. We want to be present here in 3D. This is why we're here to have a body, you know, not to try to up, up and away. Yeah. Is it unpleasant here? Okay. Well then what's your gift to make it better? You know, like show up in the now. I, I think that 
trying to only have high vibes is ultimately destructive because emotional health is really allowing yourself to feel all your feelings. And if I'm feeling salty or if I'm feeling angry or if I'm feeling despondent or if I'm having any kind of feeling, I'm just going to allow it to pass through because it takes about 90 seconds. You know, and mm-hmm. I'm just gonna like life plucked my sp- my spring my strings. I having an emotional reaction, the, my strings are gonna vibrate for about 90 seconds, and then that's gonna pass. So I'm not gonna judge it. I'm not gonna suppress it. I'm just gonna allow myself to have whatever kind of response I'm having, and I'm not gonna judge it because my emotions are part of what keeps me healthy. So I need to let myself feel everything that I feel. And I'm not, and what happens is this spiritual bypassing or what I call purple washing where people are like, oh, I'm not going to get angry, you know, and I'm, I'm not going to be jealous because I just mm-hmm. want to have these high vibes and it's just not real. It's not real, right? Oh, yeah. You can't maintain a high vibe state. I'm more interested in this idea of expanding, you know, where we expand from our core. Maybe we go from being diminished and, and tight and tense and, you know, but then we start to expand our consciousness, we, our awareness, our idea of what's possible, right? So, so we become expansive, we become radiant, we become more clear, we become more coherent. We find that vibrational sweet spot. Like that is all technically more correct language about the experience of becoming more healthy and more free. Trying to vibe higher is kind of a blind alley. It, you know, it doesn't it doesn't work. It burns <laughs> people long. out. It, it burns I, people I, out. It's it, because uh, uh, especially people who say I only do neg- I only do positive. I only do positive. I I've always liked the work of Abraham Hicks. Everyone likes Abraham. You know why not? But the one thing I think in the teaching that gets a little bit obscure is when I see people start saying, I only do positive. I only, you know, I only think about what I want. I only think positive. I don't think it's this, this constant insistence. And I'm telling you, I watch people, they just start aging. I mean, really, yeah. really fast. Cause they, I don't do negative. I don't do, oh, it's negative. I'm out of here. And you're like, yeah, but I've known you for like, you know, only like a couple of years, but you look like you're, you've aged 30 years because you're, you, you don't do negative. And it's the same, kind of the same thing as people who, uh, are waiting to ascend into the four or the five D, you know, it's like, what about, there is a real wisdom to, and I think biofield tuning can help with that, get people back in here because really you only want to only be happy. You only want to go to the, you know, to the, see the Pleiadians or the fifth dimension because this sucks. Yeah. Cause this sucks. And, and this has the potential to not suck. Yes. You know, if you, this has the potential to be so pleasurable and that's mm-hmm. part of healing too. You know, when you get your body to a place where you're not judging it anymore, like your body is so pleasurable. When you get your relationship with food healed so that you're only like, mm, you know, I'm picking cherries off my tree at the moment and they're just so good. <laughs> like just, mm, mm, the pleasure of the cherry on my tongue is an amazing thing. There is so much, um, one of my sons, he's so funny, right? I mean, the, the, the potential for humor that we have to delight ourselves, to crack ourselves up, to enjoy, you know, good conversation. There's so many ways we can make here be good. And here is inherently good. This is, earth is paradise. Earth can be heaven and it can be hell. And it's all about not whether you're vibing high or low, but whether you're vibrant, but how much noise you have in your signal. Because the clearer your signal, the more pleasurable your experience is going to be. And then that's going to impact the world around you, both locally and non-locally, right? So we got to get the guilt out of the way in order to allow ourselves to be moved towards pleasure and towards that which makes us ah and feel good. And then we become healthier and we put that vibe out into the world. You know, if everybody's walking around like a miserable victim, then we just end up with a world with miserable victims. But the fact of the matter is, is that most victimhood is a story. Not, not all, trust me, I get that. But many, many people have all different kinds of degrees of victimhood stories that are just habits and aren't necessary. Mm. And the, as you put that, it makes me think how really being selfish is a good thing, time to go. Um, because if you're not selfish, your selfishness is the only hope that some other people have. And you may not know that, so don't let them yes. down. Yes, that is such a great way to put it. That is right. a really great way to put it. And that's a great way to end it because I know you got to go. Well, Aline uh, McKissick, thanks for being on the show. Check out biofieldtuning.com for everything about Aline. You got a new book coming out. I'm looking forward to it. We'll link to it in the show notes and hope to talk to you again sometime. All right. Me too. Sounds good. Thanks so Take much. Care. Bye. Take care. Take care. 
You are listening to Radiant Creators, a collaborative project composed of people whose passion, purpose, and dedication requires forging their own unique path of empowerment and livelihood. A Radiant Creator isn't making a living, they are living. 